Hi everybody, it's Fireside Chats with Nyberg and sitting next to me is Vanessa Wojtuszak. You got it. Say that a million times. Wojtuszak. <laughs> All right, so she is Director of Audience Development for our TV station and she knows everything about social media. Yes. But first I want to know, where'd you grow up? Where are you from? Tell me a little bit oh, about yeah. you. I grew up in Connecticut, Newington. So I was there until I went to college. I went to college in Boston. Where? I went to LaSalle College. Yep. It's a very small school. It's in Newton. Um, it's right outside of Boston. But I got to experience city life Another there. state. Exactly. <laughs> yes, I went out of state for a while. And then after Boston, I moved to New York City. I was there for about over 10 years. Now, you were there with iHeartRadio. Yes. What did you do for them? So I oversaw all social media for iHeartRadio. I also helped create the iHeartRadio app. Was the original Tell project me about the manager. App. The She's app, so smart with this stuff. I love technology. I'm a big nerd. <laughs> so I, I love know, I love all nerd of this. Yeah. Um, so the app aggregates over 850 radio stations from around the country. So it's innovative because it brings old terrestrial radio yeah. to digital. So you can listen to a station in California in LA on your phone in real time. I did not know this. I'm going to have to get this yeah. app. So you developed the app? Yes, I helped develop the app. Um, and then there was custom radio too. So it was kind of like Pandora or Spotify. Right. Where you're able to create a station based around an artist or a particular song. So are you a coder? I do know how to code. Okay. Yes. So can you hack something if you need to? If I need to, yes, probably. See, I love that. I know this. <laughs> All right, well, let's just say hi to some of these people. All right, Nancy is here. Andy's here. Um, hello, everybody. Hi, guys. All right, so iHeartRadio for, you said 10 years in New York City. 10 years in New York City, but overall, I worked for the company for 14 years. All right. I started off in radio at a really, really young age. Well, you're about nine now. <laughs> so that's, you know, she started out really, really young. How did you come to WTNH? I really wanted to move back to Connecticut. My family is here. As I get older, I know I look like I'm nine. As she gets older. <laughs> As I get older, I do want to settle down. I want to have a family, and I think Connecticut's the perfect place for that. New York City was always on the go, always on the move. I'd be working 24-7, yeah. be traveling all over the place for my job. So it's good to come home and have my family there and just be able to relax and have a normal schedule as well and yeah. be able to go to TV which was also a great next step from radio and digital. Oh, absolutely. All right, so we're gonna get into some of the secrets that she knows. Uh, Kathleen, hello. Mm -hmm. uh, Sarah, hi. Welcome back to Connecticut, I love oh, that. Oh, thank you. All right, so back, you'll notice that News 8 is backwards because technology- <laughs> We not figured that out yet. Yeah, <laughs> technology has not figured out how to do that. And we are by a copy machine and a water machine. And, and a plant. And a plant, <laughs> yeah, we always have like to have a plant and there's editing bays. So we are inside the newsroom. On the mantle, the fireside, we always like to put some things there. Uh, Leroy, how you doing? You're so awesome. All right, so, so, so we've said that she's been to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Google. So now we're gonna find out some secrets. Yes. All right, so when you went to Facebook, <laughs> here's what, uh, backwards again, here's what they gave her. Hi, Tom, how are you? All right, you walk into Facebook, Oh, you even have a Dunkin' Donuts thing here. I do love Dunkin' too. Yeah, we're Dunkin' Donuts girls. <laughs> I go there every day. And I put this down. All right, so you get invited to Facebook, and I think, you know, everybody thinks that's a big secret place. All right, where is it? Um, it's in Menlo Park, California, Yeah. where the headquarters are. But they also have a headquarters, well, I guess, simultaneous headquarters in New York City. Um, I go there pretty often as well, which is great. So you're in California and New York. Yes. All right, so in Menlo Park, California, you walk into Facebook and take me inside there oh my goodness it's like a, it's an entire campus they call it a campus it's like a college campus there are so many different buildings and it's amazing it has restaurants it has a movie theater it has an ice cream shop it has a coffee shop and all the employees get to experience this and get to go in there and have stuff for free eat the idea is to keep them on campus because they're coding they're doing all that kind of stuff exactly do some of them sleep there i don't know if they sleep there but probably. All right, so um, Facebook in Menlo Park, and by the way, if you have questions, go ahead and bring them. Hey, Gary, how are you? How does it differ from Facebook in New York City? Facebook in New York City is only one building, um, but they I think they have four or five floors. So one of the floors is Instagram. Instagram is owned by Facebook, if some of you guys aren't aware of that. So here's her Instagram swag right here, Instagram. There we go. Yeah. You haven't used this yet, have you? No, it's brand no, new. I just got new. it a couple weeks ago. Someone will steal that, them. so hide it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, New York is several layers. Give me the age of people working at oh Facebook. Are they all 22? Yeah, they're all super young. So many yeah. employees. They all work on a variety of different projects, which is really interesting. There's an open floor plan. 
Um, nobody really has offices. They have conference rooms that you could go to if you need a private area for a conversation or a meeting. Um, just so innovative. There's an actual wall, you know, like a Facebook wall. You could write on it, sign your name. So, so you I, were in heaven. You were oh, in it was nerd amazing. heaven nerd walking heaven. around here. How many people are on that campus? Thousands? Got to be thousands. In Menlo Park? Definitely thousands. Thousands. Yeah, thousands. Um, did you see, um, hey, Joanne, how are you? Um, someone said, Ian, could you have her hack into my old MySpace account? Oh, MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, even I know about that. That's, that's old stuff. Um, when you were at Facebook, did you see security everywhere? Yes. I would imagine. Their security, they're very secure. Um, I usually have to sign an NDA, which is a non disclosure agreement. So, whatever I see on the walls, I have to keep to myself. I legally cannot talk about whatever innovation or things that I might see that they're developing. Right. Um, they, of course, scan my ID, they give me an ID badge. I have to wear that. Usually has either I'm here for business or I'm here for a partner. Um, there's different identification forms. Now, Instagram is, is within Facebook. Yes. Different sort of headquarters within Facebook, and what did, what did you see at Instagram? There's different buildings. Um, the one in New York, their floor, I think, is the fifth or the fifth floor, is brand new. Um, it's so cool. So is there like a big Instagram wall there too? There's a big Instagram wall. There's different installations. So you could take pictures and send them. So I don't know if you saw my Facebook page. I, I shared, did. I shared a couple of photos there. They have different rooms with different props that you could take photos and tag yourself at Instagram HQ. Their roof deck is just the most amazing thing ever. Is there a bar up there? There is a bar up there. See, they have I happy hour. Really? At Instagram? Yes. Oh my gosh. All right. So she's also been to Twitter. Um, this doesn't make noise, but her pens are in it. All right, where's Twitter? Twitter is also in California, and they also have an office in New York. Um, a lot of these social media or tech companies have offices on both coasts, just because of the time differences, sure. and it's easier to, um, I work with them on a media, you know, level. Right. So there's media in California, and there's media in New York, mm -hmm. usually. There's some in the middle in Chicago, um, and they do have offices there too, but much smaller. Um, so she teaches us how to do social media so that we will get to more <laughs> of you than normal. She knows all about that. And then yeah. finally, so Google, and this just says Google partners backwards. Google more secure than Facebook? Yes, huge they're campus? in Mountain View, California. Yeah. Huge mm -hmm. campus as well. Um, they're also really awesome. They have YouTube as well in there. Um, it's a big campus. Some of it you have to drive around to get to because there's so many different buildings. There's so many different departments. Right. There are people that code a very specific part of YouTube. There are people that, you know, moderate. There are people that are, you know, enhancing search. So, so many specific job roles in all of these tech companies. What would you tell the folks the best thing to do if you, if you have a small business or um, whatever you do in life, how do you reach the most people through social media? You definitely have to be on social media, you have to post regularly. So social media is a data science. It's not like fun all the time. People are like, oh yeah, you work in social media, all you do is post photos and you just have so much fun. It's very strategic. So there's so, analytics behind there's it. There's analytics, I'm a very big numbers person, but I'm also creative, which is a little unique. Now, lately they've pulled back the analytics. So you might think for your business that you are, um, hey Jenny Reber, that's my niece. She's oh, in hi. Indianapolis. How cool is hi, that? Jenny. She's an actress. So <laughs> you might see her on the big screen wow. someday. Um, analytics are pulled back. So you might think for your small business or whatever you're trying to tell folks about on Facebook that a lot of people are seeing it. Yes. Not so, right? Unless you boost it and pay some money. Um, a lot of it is coming down to the business model, where you do have to post a post and put some money behind it with advertising, so it reaches a certain amount of people. So the way Facebook really works is you put out a post, and if that post is getting a lot of engagement, if it's getting a lot of comments, likes, and shares, then it's bumped up to another level of people. On its own without a boost. On its own without a boost. Ah. So you have to have super engaging content for it to be distributed to more people. So it keeps going up different levels and the velocity too. Let's say I get 10 likes in five minutes and then all of a sudden it goes up to another level of people. Then I get another 20 likes. You know, that content is on fire so they want more people to see it because it's obviously something interesting. Just like this video, so I hope you share it. <laughs> yes, share away and talk to us. Vicki. Hi Vicki, that's my is sister. Is Vicki your sister? Yeah. How are you doing? <laughs> she looks terrific, right? I'm loving the necklace too. Thank you. Um, what about Twitter? And what I want to ask you about Twitter is what is the best time of day to post on Twitter where people will see that? It depends on your own account. 
that's the problem with okay. all these social media, again. Um, it depends on your own account and it depends on who you're interacting with, who your audience is, and the type of people that you're sharing. So like you say, to. it's a science. It, it really is a, is a science. science. Yeah. Um, as far as um, content that you're putting, a lot of people will see the boomerang stuff. Yeah. Uh, on Twitter, they'll put tiny short little videos. That catches your eye. What I do with Twitter is I always at least put a picture. Yes. Because I think if you just have writing, people, you know, go past it. Yeah, most people don't click through those links. Even I admit to it too. Sure. I scroll through Twitter and I'm catching the news headlines. If it's a story that's really compelling, then I'll click through. But most people don't. So you have to have a video or a photo. Really visual content is what it's all about across all these platforms, especially Instagram, which is the fastest growing. And everybody's on Instagram. Yes. I, I wonder how, where that's going to go because it's part of Facebook, mm -hmm. and everybody, you know, gets their filters and you put your cool little stuff on Instagram. But yeah. probably mostly women, right? Mostly women. Yeah. But there's a fair amount of uh, males too. Okay, and they're starting to sell on Instagram. Yes, they are. Because everything is a, is a business model. Um, how have you seen these social media platforms change in the last, let's say? five years because it's rapidly changing. Oh, it's rapidly changing. Once you think you know the algorithm and think you have it down to be able to crack it, it changes. Um, a lot of it is based on interaction and engagement, which is more important than total likes to a page. So let's say the WTNH page has, you know, a million fans. I wish, that'd be great. Um, but a million fans really doesn't mean anything if no one's engaging with our posts. If uh -huh. posts that aren't getting likes or comments or shares, then it kind of defeats the purpose. It's about really being social. It's not about a popularity contest. And a lot of people say, um, you know, whether, whether they're trying to promote a small business, I keep going back to that because I love small business. Yeah. It is, it is a your feed and watering of a social media platform. So you're engaging, you're mm -hmm. engaging, you're trying to get people, but it's a full-time job just engaging. It really is. You and can't the run the cash register. It. No. Right? Um, I mean, they're trying to make tools to make it a lot easier to How engage. How so? Um, scheduling different posts, but then you have to go back at the end of the day and say, you know, yeah. hi Lynn, hi Eric. You know, engaging like this is really the key to social media, and it does take up a lot of time, but it's an investment that your small business can make. Right, or so your television station, or yeah. your radio station. Exactly. All right, who has questions for her? Hey Lynn, how are you doing? Because she is really an authority on all of this stuff and takes it to heart and, um, you know, I can talk a little bit of nerd stuff with her, but not on the level that she's on. <laughs> Aldina, how are you doing? Very good. How many people? Do we have 18 people, so 18 that's pretty people. good. That pretty good. 7, 10 or yeah. so. Hi Ellie. Ellie's good. Um, so ask some questions about Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. Or about my life. Or about her <laughs> life. Um, you're, you're of Polish descent. I am Polish, yes. Mom and Dad both Polish? They are. Are they from Poland? Yes. So I am a first generation. A lot of people don't know that. Uh, my sister says nerd status. Yes, I am nerd <laughs> status. She knows that. So do they have ties to New Britain then? They do. My grandma actually lives in New Britain, uh -huh. of course. So, yeah. So can you speak the language? I can. So tell the folks something in Polish. Ja mówię trochę po polsku, tak dobrze nie mówię. How cool is that? I said, I speak Polish, but sometimes it doesn't sound that great because um, I have an American accent. Yes. What town are your folks from in Poland? My dad's from Gdansk, which uh -huh. is the top. Um, it's, there's, you know, it's right on the shore of the Baltic Sea. And my mom is from the southern part of it. How did they meet? They met in America. Oh my gosh. Both came here, so. I, you know I've been to Poland. Yeah. And I've been to, to Warsaw, which I loved, and other cities. I drove pretty much the whole country. It is a beautiful place to go if you haven't been. Mm -hmm. How many times have you been? I've only been twice in my life. When was the last time? The last time was probably almost maybe 20 years ago. Oh, it's time. Yeah. If you go to Warsaw at Christmas time, it is stunning. Wow. Just gorgeous. So any of you, all right, do we have questions? What about fundraisers? Oh, fundraisers on Facebook. What yes. do you think about that? Um, they did open that up so you could kind of crowdsource. Uh, the donate button is something big, and I think it's great. Um, Facebook does work with a lot of major um, companies to help raise funds, especially in a disaster. Sure. Disaster relief, there was one effort. I don't remember exactly which hurricane, um, but they raised a couple million dollars for an organization. So 
I do believe that that's such a great cause um, that Facebook is in, involved in. Does Facebook charge you, do they take some of the money if you put up a, a no, fundraising they event? Not. They don't. No. You get they all don't. of that money. Yeah, you get all of it. Same with Facebook Marketplace, which is brand new. It's kind of like Craigslist. They don't take a cut of what you're making or to post on there too, so that's really really cool. It's one of their newest tools. Talk about the marketplace a little bit because I, I know a little bit about it. So you say it's like Craigslist. So if, if I have a piano I want to sell mm -hmm. and I just type in Facebook Marketplace. Yep. Or you see the little icon. There's a store on the bottom with a, I think, an orange awning. If you click on that, you're going to go right into Marketplace. You could either post and sell things or you could browse and see what's nearby that you could either get for free or you could get at a reasonable price too. What don't people know about social media that they need to know? That you like little secrets you've learned. Oh jeez. I mean you you can sit there and you know I've seen her do this <laughs> and you can post. I mean do do people <coughs> do think that they understand the platforms enough or are we still just getting there? And your age group, you know, does it in its sleep, but yeah. those who are new to it. Yeah. What's the first thing you do? I mean, I think it's still ever evolving. I think they're adding these features at such a rapid rate. You could do more things. You could check in. You could share your emotions. You could go live on Facebook, which is new. You which is what we're doing now. Live on Instagram, which is also kind of fairly new. You could go live on YouTube. So using Facebook or any of the social platforms to go live is a big thing. Facebook Watch. That's Facebook the next watch. television it station. Is. Yes. Globally. Yes. What do you know about it? Um, it is a great shared experience, so people could come together in a group, in a group setting, and watch a video and comment along and have discussions. It's kind of like, you know, you're in your living room with your friends and you're all watching the same thing. Even though I might be in California, you might be in Connecticut, I'm still watching the same piece of content at the same time. Because the problem with videos when you post them on Facebook, I'm going to watch it at a different time, you're going to sure. watch it at a different time, so here it's more appointment driven and you're able to watch at the same time and create a conversation, which is the biggest part of social media. Now, are they also developing, they're de developing shows as well, yes. Facebook is, just yeah. like Amazon and Netflix and everything else. What about Snopes algorithm saying no one sees our feed? You know anything about that? Well, the algorithms, a lot of the publishers might think that Facebook is taking away their reach and things like that. Um, honestly, it really is about their audience and who they're reaching and if they're paying money to reach other audiences. But Facebook has been really open. Facebook has the journalism project, which I'm part of, um, where they really want to support all media companies and all they've had media some organizations. Issues. Yes, yes, there has been some press about them skewing one way or another. But honestly, they're, they've been really working with um, all news organizations, whether that is Fox or whether that's CNN mm -hmm. or NBC, ABC. You know, they're treating everyone fairly. I go to these meetings and all of those organizations are present. Interesting. All right, what about bots? Bots, uh, explain what that is on Twitter. You know, you'll just see the little egg. Hi, Mike. Hey, this Mike, how are you boyfriend. doing? Oh, I love that. <laughs> um, explain what bots are. Bots are like fake profiles and fake accounts that either follow you or like, um, and they're just fake profiles. Who puts them up? Well, there are a All lot kinds of organizations. Of people, right? Some of them have negative causes, yeah. you know, negative reasons. They might go in and try to hack your account too, or they're just posting spammy content, whether that's fake news or false information, or they're just really trying to collect followers or fans. Um, there's different types of bots. I know people who have bought accounts to make their followers look bigger. Yep. Don't do that. Yeah, please don't do don't that. Don't do that. That's, that is not That makes a good you look inauthentic. If you're a normal person and you have a million followers, uh, it's you kind of a red flag. flag. Yeah. No. <laughs> and, and I also think, and you dealt with um, at iHeartRadio some big stars and some music folks and all of that. They're not doing the tweeting. Somebody else is doing the tweeting. I um, mean, rarely, right? Do they depends. do their own? It depends. Some some people are really hands-on with their own accounts. Uh, Taylor Swift liked to do her own account. Um, I did ghostwrite for a couple of major celebrities. Can you say? Yes. Oh, this is going to be good. Who? <laughs> um, for the iHeartRadio Music Festival, I would provide a specific copy. My favorite was actually Lil Wayne. Really? Because I would write in his voice and he'd use it, and I was like, no, that's coming from me. <laughs> How do you get into his voice? A lot of social media is really about psychology, too. You have to understand what drives people, what people are really going to click on, what they're going to engage with. Um, you have to take a look at their persona. 
So everyone has their unique brand, everyone has their unique persona. Something that you might tweet, I might not tweet. Sure. Or my voice might be different, I might be presenting it differently. So I'd analyze these artists and celebrities and try to feed them the copy that I wanted to present in their own voice. Do you have a psychology degree? No, but I am interested in psychology. <laughs> ah, so see, this is good. Um, the swiping that we all do mm -hmm. on Facebook and on Twitter, and I go like this in the morning and I'm looking for headlines and I'm looking th for things to retweet that might have to do with Connecticut or, there's a psychology between swiping. It's addictive. It is very addictive. Whether you're swiping this way or this way. Tell me about what you know about that. Um, I mean, I don't know too much about it, but it is addicting and people do it in the grocery store. People use it as a crutch. Um, I know I personally try not to be on my phone all the time, believe it or not. A lot of people think, oh, she must be on her phone all the time. Vicki, if you're watching, you know that. <laughs> um, my sister texts me throughout the evening. Sometimes I put it away. You know, I like to Good have for time you. for myself, for time with my friends. I believe that interaction personally goes a lot long. Well, because farther. we're missing the moments. Yes. We're so busy looking down here. And yes, it's a great tool and you can connect with people around the world, but you're, you're living in this weird space yeah. where you're not seeing the moment. And I, I feel like that's a downfall for a lot of yeah. kids these days. It's very addicting. I mean, the CEOs of all these tech companies, when they're raising their children, do not want their children on iPads. They don't want their kids on social media because they know that this is causing such a big issue. Even though they're billionaires because they're selling it to us. Yep. Um, oh, Vicki just said rude <laughs> because you put her down. But I that, She can do that, sisters. But, but that just should tell you something. When Bill Gates says, don't go on a platform because I know it's addicting and I want you to learn about the world. That should tell you something. I yeah. mean, they're getting rich off of us. Spending time. Spending so time. The new initiative that Instagram has introduced as well as Facebook is time spent. So you're able to go into your settings and see how much time you're spending on these social media platforms to help you manage your time better. You could set alarms, hey, I only want to be on Facebook for an hour a day or 15 minutes of my day. Um, you could direct that, you could look into your settings, it's very easy to find, but it's now a big push from these tech companies to really make sure that you're spending quality amounts of time, not quantity amounts of time where you're just scrolling aimlessly. No. Which is what a lot of people are doing, they aimlessly. Do. aimlessly. Um, it, just let's wrap up with something that you think is in the future that's coming. I mean, not giving away secrets because yeah. you signed yeah. NDAs. Yeah, my life away. But, but what do you, what do you think in the future is going to be either Facebook or Instagram or, or some other new platform? Yeah, so AR, which is augmented reality, and VR, virtual reality, is definitely the next wave of the future. Facebook is working on a lot of those experiences, which was amazing to see at the F8 developer conference. Can you describe what that looks like? Yeah, so I ended up getting an Oculus Riff. I don't know how many of you guys oh boy. know what that is. Nope. Um, it's a big thing you put on your, your head and it's an immersive experience. So you put it on your head and it's essentially a screen, but you can look up, you can look down, and you can see the world around you. And it's just so amazing because you're in the space. The only thing is that you're wearing this mask and you could easily walk into a wall or fall well, down. Well, right, right, or um, a car, whatever. So I was a little scared using it, but it's absolutely amazing. There are these like lands where let's say you have an avatar that's like, as mm -hmm. tall as you, mm -hmm. and I could walk around and like shake your hand and talk to you. That scares me though that the human I know. person is going to go away. Yeah, it's that, a little frightening. Yeah. Um, it's but really, amazing. It's amazing on one end, but it's frightening because I like to have you know these social experiences right. in person. And now people are going to be wearing these masks or sitting quietly. I have quietly. claustrophobia. We have a question. Good luck uh, with show and to you, Vanessa. Thanks for talking about my questions. Oh, nice. yeah, you're that welcome, from Sean. Sean. That's Thank very, you. That's very sweet. I appreciate that. Anything else before we go? Because all 15 of you um, are going to be released in a second. <laughs> <laughs> for watching. Um, thank you so much for coming on Fireside Chats You're with welcome. Nyberg. I, I hope this wasn't too it. nerdy for all of you. No, I hope it was nerdy because I think that's great. So this will be here and you can watch it again and, and learn. Thank, oh, one more question. Oh, Joan. Oh. Hello, Joan. Hi, Joan. All right. Thanks so right. much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.